What's going on guys and welcome to Who To Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode but before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. You don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help or for those of you out there who may be stuck for ideas on what players you could bring in for a specific team in career mode. So yes, who to sign for is back. If you missed it, it's been a long time since I've done an episode. But after Barcelona played around with you last night in the El Clasico and were beaten by two goals to one, I thought, why not treat you to another episode? I haven't done Barcelona yet, and I'll show you who to sign for a Barcelona career mode. So drop a like if you're excited for the return of this series. I might do some more in the future, maybe some in this upcoming week and maybe in the week after that as well. I'm not too sure. I thought I'd bring it back just for one episode to see whether you guys have missed this series and want to see some more teams done. But either way, we're going to use Barcelona for this who to sign for. Now, this is the side I haven't done yet. Of course, last season they won the Champions League. They are one of the best teams in the game with one of the biggest budgets in the game as well. And as you can see, the squad report right here it is a phenomenal squad. It is a really, really awesome team. And without question, you should be aiming to win a treble in the first season. So Barcelona's team, as you can see right here, looks really, really strong. Wrong. Obviously, a massive budget as well. It's around £72 million when you start the game. Of course, you get preseason tournaments as well, but of course, we skipped them in this Huda Sign 4 series. So, a really good team. And you may look at it and think, well, where could the improvements be made? Where could you bring in new players to make this squad look stronger? Well, for me, the key with Barcelona is building for the future, adding to the young talent they already have, making the squad stronger, and also possibly bringing in one star player as well. And if I was going to make one star signing for Barcelona, this is the guy I would recommend signing. Signing, Jerome Boateng of Bayern Munich. Now, before you will jump on back, as I did say at the start of the episode, these signings aren't designed to be realistic. They're just some tips and suggestions for you. So Jerome Boateng, in my opinion, would be a phenomenal signing for Barcelona, and here's why. Now, I know they've got some great centre-backs already. Gerard Piquet, Javier Mascarano, Marc Bartra, a good young talent coming through, uh, Mathieu and Vermaelen as well. Five really good centre-backs. You probably sit there thinking, really sign another centre-back? Well, yes, and here's the reason why. Mascarano's in his third Matthews in his 30s. Vermaelen's 29 years old and there's no guarantee Mark Bartra will be world class in the future. He could be very good but no guarantee. Whereas Jerome Boateng is already world class. 87 overall. One of the best centre backs in the world. He's an awesome, awesome defender. I've used so many in FIFA as well and this guy is without doubt one of the best. He is quick. He is strong. He is tall at 6'4". He can be pushed out to play right back as well. He's just an all round great defender. A complete defender. Absolutely fantastic and I would say that part Partnering him alongside Gerard Piquet would be a really good choice for you because he's 26 years old, so maybe not too young, but he's not going to decrease in the first few years. He's got about four or five years before he starts to decrease, and that's just a possibility as well. Could be even longer than that. So Jerome Boateng, in my opinion, would be a great signing. It'll cost you around £40 million. Pounds. That's what we negotiate with Bayern Munich in this who to sign for episode. That's a lot of money. That's over half your transfer budget, but if you're going to make a star signing, I would say beef up that back line, bring in Jerome Boateng, Boateng, partner him alongside Gerard Piquet. He's got a four-star weak foot as well, so you can play him in that left centre-back role and not be too worried when he's using that weaker left foot because it won't feel too weak when playing out from the back. He is an awesome, awesome, awesome defender. And I, again, I've used so many centre-backs in FIFA. This guy, though, is one of the absolute best. He's phenomenal. He really is awesome in every single department. That's why, in my opinion, he is a complete defender. Also play out from the back as well. Very important for a team like Barcelona. Just an awesome, awesome all-round centre-back. And again, him partnering Gerard Piquet would make your back line stronger and again he's not going to decrease in a few years so he's a really good signing in my opinion would be the first player to bring in he's 87 overall he can also get higher as well can get to 88 that's his potential right now and possibly with good training and good form as well he could get even past that maybe to 89 or possibly even sneak into the 90s unlikely but it could still happen either way I'd also recommend selling Adriano from Barcelona now Adriano of course who's been at Barcelona for several years. He's a loyal player for Barcelona, but he's 30 years old now. I think he's 30 or possibly 31, thinking about it, but he's about 30 years old. And the truth of the matter is, he's 79 overall and certainly not a bad player to play left back. He's a good utility player, I feel, Adriano. But in my opinion, I'd look to shift him on. He's on, I think it's about 70 grand a week, and you don't really need to pay that for him. So if you can sell him, I'd definitely recommend doing so. You can get around £5 million for him. That's what we got for the Brazilian. He goes, and then I recommend signing a younger left back to give competition 
to Jordi Alba down that left flank. Now, my number one target for that left back role will be this guy right here, Jose Gaia of Valencia. 20 years old, already 80 overall at just 20, and his potential is 87. So Jose Gaia can grow seven ratings, reach 87 in the game. He would give great competition for Jordi Alba throughout the years you would be using Barcelona. He's Spanish as well, which is good if you like to sign players to come from the same nation as the club, like I certainly do in my career modes. He's an awesome youngster. Again, only 20 years old, already 80 overall, and again, can grow to 87. You may not even have to give him a wage increase as well. We uh, gave him the same salary, 50 grand a week for five years, and he said yes. So for 15 million pounds, Jose Gaia comes in, and when you think about the fact he could hit 87 in the future, imagine this guy at full potential, and imagine the date you brought him in, the 26th of July 2015 in my case, at 80 overall. He will grow to be an absolute monster, and for 15 million pounds, that will prove to be one hell of a bargain in years to come. So Jose Gaia for me would be a fantastic signing in that left back role. Once you sold Adriano, again, he was five, he, he went for five million pounds. So in total, you're only losing 10 million pounds here on this guy. And again, an ideal replacement, less wages uh, weekly than Adriano, a really good signing. And for me, great competition for Jordi Alba down the left back role. Now, the third signing I look for Barcelona is this guy right here, Paco Alcacer, also of Valencia, one year older than Jose Gaia, 21 years old, but he's a striker and he's the same overall at 80. Now, Paco Alcacer right now is a very good young talent. Again, 21 years old. He's a really, really decent young striker. I think with his stats as well, could also play a little bit deeper in the CF slash CAM role as well. But we're just going to worry about him as an out-and-out -out striker. And the reason I'd recommend Paco Alcacer is because they've got Luis Suarez playing striker right now. And you know Alcacer is not going to come in and replace him in the first season. But they don't actually have a backup striker, an out-and-out -out striker that's currently on the bench. If you bring in Paco Alcacer, you're adding goals off the bench, a really decent option if Luis Suarez ever gets a ban or an injury he's a really good young talent and can grow to 87 overall I do believe on the original database it was 88 overall but in this database right now it's 87 potentials uh, for Paco Alcacer so he grows 7 ratings he's a really good young striker and again he's not going to replace Luis Suarez in the first season you know that but he's going to grow quietly whilst on your bench can get to an 87 overall he'd be a really smart pickup in my opinion and you can get him for around 20 million pounds now again this may seem like a little bit of an overspend for him, £5 million over his valuation. You're thinking, do I need to buy him? I've got Messi, Suarez and Neymar. They can all play striker if Luis Suarez got injured, but do I need to buy this guy? Well, I would definitely say it's worth doing. He'll come off the bench for you. He'll play in cup games. He'll grow pretty nicely too. He probably won't complain much in the first season either. I think he'd be a smart signing for £20 million to come off your bench and give you peace of mind. Also, you may have seen as well there, Jeremy Matthew. We sold him to Arsenal. Once you've bought in Jerome Boateng, you're not going to need the Frenchman in your back line anymore. You may as well get rid of the guy, get a few million pounds for him, and that's exactly what we did. So, Matthew, I'd sell him as well once you brought in Jerome Boateng. But uh, still, following out Paco Alcacer, as you can see here, we did negotiate a contract with him, didn't have to give him a wage increase. 20 million pounds for this guy, and again, 5 million pounds over his valuation. He's got some really good stats, though, only 21 years old, and he's a really solid backup option for Luis Suarez. So, just like Jose Guy, he won't go into the first team straight away, but he'll sit on the bench, he'll grow ratings, he'll be peace of mind for you. He's a really smart pickup, in my opinion. So Paco Alcacer will be the third signing I would look to bring in for Barcelona. Now he's still got a little bit of money left over despite those signings right there. Combined total of £75 million for those three players. But after the sales of some of the players you'd be making, you'll be able to raise a bit more money to also sign one or two more players. I also recommend selling this guy as well, Douglas. He's a right back at Barcelona. He's 25 years old, 72 overall. Not really sure what he's doing there to be honest. Well, go ahead and sell him. You don't need him in your squad, trust me. He's not worth his wage. And after you sold Douglas as well, you might have enough money need to buy a new backup right back. Now I know Danny Alves is the first choice at Barcelona but he is 32, 33 years old I think Danny Alves is and Martin Montoya right now is currently out on loan at Real Betis so signing a backup right back in my opinion could be a decent choice for you and if I was going to sign one there are a couple of candidates out there but this is probably the guy I would go in for if you could still afford him. Serge Aurier of Paris Saint-Germain now he's an Ivorian defender, he plays right back but can also play centre back as well despite his height being only 5 foot 9. He's a very very smart signing. I'll definitely recommend him. He starts off at 81 overall. He's only 22 years old and can grow to an 86 overall in the future. You can get him for around 17, 18 million pounds. We negotiate a deal with PSG for 17 million pounds. That's three and a half million pounds over his valuation, but can grow five ratings, reach 86 potential. And he is your long-term replacement for the Brazilian Danny Alves. So I'd recommend Serge Aurier. Again, you don't have to do this though. You could possibly bring back Martin Montoya from his loan spell at Real Betis, but there's no guarantee he'll be good enough to replace Danny Alves in the future. Or is this guy it certainly will do. Again, can reach 86 potential, possibly even exceed that as well with the 
training and good form as well. He'd be an awesome, awesome understudy for Danny Elves, in my opinion. And again, maybe you could use him right from the beginning too. 81 overall isn't too bad to start of at all, obviously. Really, really good right back. And again, I would definitely recommend this guy if you still have the money left over once you've sold some of those players. So again, selling Matthew, selling Douglas helps us raise the funds for that player. And I think Serge Aurier would be a really good signing as your long-term replacement for Danny Alves. Uh, also, this guy as well. Now, I put in a bid for this guy. You don't have to sign him. It's, it's one of those things where I thought we may as well use as much money as we got here at Barcelona. But you guys probably don't need to do this. But Angelino of Manchester City was another player I went in for. We sold one of their left backs they had so we have two left backs here now Jordi Alba and of course the new man Jose Gaia I thought maybe get a third option in a young talent Angelino is a teenager currently plays for Manchester City I do believe he's on loan right now for New York City FC I think maybe I've got that wrong not too sure but either way he's 18 years old starts with 64 overall and he grows to 79 now you may sit there and think really only to 79 is that worth it well I suppose if you want to bring him in and possibly look to make some money on him in the future he'll probably grow right from the beginning in the reserves anyway it's just whether you you want to do it or not get a third choice left back in a young talent it's up to you really it's not really worthwhile if you only plan on spending one or two years of Barcelona but if you're going to be here for years to come it'll be nice to watch his development over the years he could turn into a decent squad player get some minutes for you in the seasons you'll be here and again you don't have to do this but you can get him for around 700,000 pounds that's what we paid for him and again a decent young talent that grows 15 ratings but again probably won't be much other than a squad player for you throughout your career Barcelona so if you want to do it that's cool otherwise don't bother but anyway Angelina was the fifth and final signing we made alongside Serge Aurier as well. So two new fullbacks coming in alongside Jose Gaia, who was the third fullback. Also signing Boateng as well from Bayern Munich, who was a centre-back. And of course, Paco Alcacer, the striker as well. So five players coming in for Barcelona. You spend an awful lot of money in the first summer transfer window. But when you look at the players coming in, all of which I think would be really, really solid. Again, maybe this guy is one of those trivial signs you don't have to make, but I thought it'd be kind of nice to see uh, how you're doing the first season regardless. But again, you spend around 92 million pounds, 92.7 million pounds what we spent, raised 16.3 million pounds, so a very expensive first transfer window with Barcelona, but when you look at the players coming in though, they all add quality in their areas, so Jerome Boateng again will go straight into the first 11, partner Gerard Piquet, a really awesome signing again, in my opinion, he should be the star player you'd buy for Barcelona in the first window, uh, also uh, Serge Aurier as well, a backup right back for Danny Alves, he's his long-term long successor. Jose Gaia will uh, battle with Jordi Alba for the left-back role throughout the career at Barcelona. Paco Alcacer, of course, an understudy for Luis Suarez. Good to bring off the bench from time to time. Can grow to 87 overall. And again, Angelino, a bit of a trivial signing. But if you want to bring him in, you may as well do so. So that is the, uh, the, the five signs I'll make for Barcelona. Those are the five signs I'll make for Barcelona. And again, you don't actually have to make all of them. If you didn't want to bring in Serge Aurier, for example, maybe you've got faith in Martin Montoya. What you could do is save your money, not spend £17 million on uh, Aurier and just spend about £1 million recalling Montoya from Real Batiste. That is an option for you. You can recall him and have him on your bench instead. It's up to you. But in my opinion, Martin Montoya is 24 years old now. I'm not entirely sure he's going to be good enough to replace Danny Alves in the future. He might be. He might be. But I'm not entirely sure. So in my opinion, I'd leave Montoya out on loan at Real Batiste and then next season possibly look to cash in on the Spanish right back. But either way, those are the five signings I would make. This is the squad we were left with after all of those uh, signings came in and a couple of departures as well. This is how the team looks. It's absolutely fantastic. Again, you may look at it and think, have you really added too much quality to it? Well, not exactly. Boateng coming is the only player that will go into the first 11. But with this Barcelona squad, you don't need to bring in too many players in the first window. Again, it's all about building for the future, adding to the young talent, and improving your squad depth. We've certainly done that, that's for sure. And it makes the Barcelona squad even stronger than it was at the start of this episode. So believe it or not, this Barcelona team can be better, and it can get some work done to it. And and those are the five players I'll bring in. So as per usual, we simulate to the end of the season, see how Barcelona would get on. As you can see, they won La Liga, just like they possibly will do in real life, despite losing to Real Madrid in the El Clasico last night. They won La Liga by two points ahead of Real Madrid. They finished with 84 points. Real Madrid had 82. And in third place, Atletico had 73. In the Supercopa at the start of the season, they also won that as well. Beat Athletic Bilbao over two legs. 4-2 was the final aggregate score. They also won the Copa del Rey as well. Beat Valencia by two goals to one. And they retain their challenge. Champions League by beating Juventus in a repeat of last year's final. They beat the Italians by a goal to nil. So the, the clean sweep, the clean sweep of Barcelona, all four trophies won in the first season, but don't sound too impressed. This is an unbelievable squad. And the fact of the matter is, if you're not winning at least three of those four trophies in your first season, you'll probably be disappointed because this is an unbelievable squad. 
It is one of the best in the game. It is absolutely fantastic. And again, you may sit there and think, wow, four trophies, that's amazing. But with Barcelona, with this team, it is one of the best sides in the game. If you're not winning at least three of those, you probably will be disappointed. It's a great squad. And again, even though it really is awesome, you still can improve it. Like we've done with the signings we made here, you may spend over 90 million pounds. You may think some of those players are unnecessary. But in my opinion, it's good to get peace of mind. It's good to improve your squad depth. And if you want to fight for all three of those major honors there, I would say that getting better players for your squad, just in case you get an injury crisis or anything like that, give you peace of mind. I would say that these players are all worth bringing in. So those are the five players I would sign for a Barcelona career mode, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed this episode of Who to Sign For. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. I really enjoyed making it for you. So if you'd like to see me do another one, then please do drop a like on this video and let me know in the comment section down below what team you would like to see me do next. So thank you very much for watching the video, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do let me know in the comment section down below what players you would sign for a Barcelona career mode and what players you would sell from Barcelona as well and please do let me know who you want to see me do next in this Who to Sign For series. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For hopefully very soon.